If I have a double chin in this video, I'm gonna be upset. Hey guys, I'm Lacey Stewart, nurse here at the AGC with another awesome video for you today. Um, this patient actually volunteered for this video, which always makes us happy. Um, today we're gonna focus on obviously his case, but we're also going to focus um, on recovery and talking about that a little bit. Uh, we are in the process of possibly making a new recovery video, so stay tuned for that. Um, but today we're going to start with just kind of his story um, and, and how he came to be here. I was uh, talking to him before we started this video and he was really good at kind of describing the mindset of someone suffering from gynecomastia. So, um, well, I'll just start here. So sure. you said this started around puberty, right? Yeah, yeah, so around like 12 or 13, you know, that range. Yeah. Um, and like almost immediately, like I was like, okay, this doesn't look like anything yeah. I've ever kind of seen in a, in a man. Yeah. Or like my father, like he'd yeah. walk around the house with his shirt off sometimes. Right. It didn't look anything like that. Right. Um, and, you know, uh, I never really talked to anyone about it. Yeah. I just kind of like lived my life, but it was Kept very it self. I was always self-conscious about it, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, started off at, at puberty. All throughout um, high school and, and college, I wasn't like the most in shape person, yeah. you know, in general. Yeah. Um, so that definitely, <laughs> definitely um, maybe exacerbated the problem right. a little bit, but um, really it was in my um, mid to, to later 20s now yeah. where I really decided to, you know, take my health a lot more seriously and right. started doing martial arts and like lifting weights and things yeah. like that. So I've lost a, you know, a fair amount of weight. How and, much weight? Um, so yeah, I was around like the 260, 265 area. And today I think I weighed in at like 225, Good for 226. You. That's so huge. Um, it's not where I want to be just like final. Yeah. But, um, but now I feel definitely comfortable enough to get the surgery and then right. finish off the weight loss right. um, that I wanted. Well, that, that's great. Um, I was also telling him that I find that a lot of patients will keep weight so that they can camouflage their chest, you know, uh, and he knew exactly what I was talking about. Um, when your chest sticks out and your belly sticks out, it looks like it all goes together. But if your stomach is flat and your chest isn't, uh, it just doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Well, yeah, like, you know, uh, when you have this condition, a very common thing for me at least mm -hmm. was like how you look like in a t-shirt, Yeah, you know? Um, and you, as you know, like you do everything possible to like make your torso be as flat as possible. Right. So things like rolling your shoulders right. or actually like maintaining the like belly. an overweight yeah. belly yeah. to kind of make It's almost like a defense mechanism. That's your shield. Exactly. Kind of. Yeah. Exactly. And it's all to just hide, you know, your man boobs. Yeah. You know? And it's just like yeah. something you're constantly thinking about. And, um, and I was mentioning it to you before, right? Yeah. Um, if you have like a hundred percent of like your brain capacity, there's always like a certain percentage that you're thinking constantly about thinking about. Yeah your man boobs, you know, and that, you know, the cost of the surgery was like a big thing for me. Yeah. Right? But the way I kind of justified it was like, if I can get like that 10% back yeah. over the course of the rest of my life. Exactly. You know, what's that worth? What to is you? that worth? Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Is there, is there a price to that? that? Yeah. There, and there is a price. 100%, yeah. Yeah. And confidence and Absolutely. Just going after things that you want to do in life, right? And, yeah. Um, it sounds funny, but like, man, it's like... Hold, hold you back. back. No, it's 100% <laughs> like it's true. In fact, yeah. one of my favorite things uh, is when I do have these guys that will send pictures of them with their shirt off at the beach sure. or like in the gym doing the selfie in the mirror and they have their shirt off and it makes us so happy. I can't, yeah. because, because you yeah. can tell that that person is feeling good in their skin for the first time, maybe ever. You know, Seriously. and there's Seriously. something, there's yeah. so much value to that. And so, yeah, you talk about the money and I, yeah, you, you, you definitely are, you get it right. Like mm. is, you know, you, you can complain about money, but look at what you're dealing with. Yeah. You, you know, live once. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's something that live your best life. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And be comfortable it's in your own it. skin. It's going to yeah. be worth it. It is. And, yes. and that's another exciting thing is I always know when I come in here, what's going to happen and they don't. 
you know, I know that here in like two hours, Mm -hmm. we're going to be in recovery and it's going to be like, ta-da, and it's going to change their life. I mean, it's emotional in there sometimes. Um, But they, I know this is going to be huge. And the reason this is going to be, well, they're all important and huge and awesome. But yours is really cool because you have these great pecs. I can tell yeah. that you you work out. You're doing hard sure. work. Do the yeah. thing where you were flexing your chest chest muscle. Just now? Yeah, yeah. you see? This yeah. is this is the, yeah. the muscle, and down here is the gyno. This yeah. is the gyno. And so that's going to be gone, and you can relax. And the great thing is this areola, what the skin can do naturally is really great. It will just kind of pull back up. And it'll, the skin will just shrink right up. And people always ask me a lot of questions about that. How does that happen? You know, how does the skin go back? Well, I always give the example of women get pregnant with babies and we extend our skin quite a bit and it's able to go back. And so this is minor compared to that. And so the, the skin retraction is phenomenal thing that can happen. Well, there's no it. What? There's no weight pulling it. Yeah. Yeah. Once, once you get rid of the stuffing, Okay. It will just go back, you know? And so, yeah. And then the big, big thing too today I will focus on is, um, the skin retraction and and how to help yourself with the skin retraction with the lipo foam. It's a miracle. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love the stuff. Um, but anyways, we'll show you guys that later. We'll put the lipo foam up against his chest and show you how it's going to pull the skin back where it needs to be. And it's going to you don't set it and forget it. That's mm-hmm. my new thing. Um, you've got to like pull up your skin every day a lot um, to get it to stay where you want it. Set. But you can yeah. you can literally make it how you want. It's awesome. Great. So, Great. okay, guys. So that's it for now. We are probably maybe going to show Dr. Creedy marking a little bit, but we are going to head into the OR and we'll talk uh, more about his case and about recovery and i can't wait to show you the result you know i'm always looking for words to describe what's going on as as everyone knows i've heard this a million times like what you're going through but the lacy told me two things that he said that were really cool he said you know in your life you got 100 percent of your mind and that it's always uh, this guy that takes about 10 percent of your mind right yeah i mean it's just really is always there you know like i do sales for a living right so i'm like constantly talking about stuff and it's like my day is about like efficiency. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Talking to people, like getting, you know, closing deals. And if there is like a certain percentage percentage of my brain that is yeah. worried about something else, especially something as like yeah. crazy as this, right? Well, it's um, crazy. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah. That there is literally like an opportunity cost, right? Yeah. To, to stuff in life, right? And maybe I'm just talking about professionally, but like everything. Yeah. Right? Like, it just it really affects even the life. cost so which is a, which is a good thing and i and i understand it's cost i always tell people i came from nothing and i realize it costs money to get this done and i know it's frustrating if you don't have the money to get it done and at the end of the day i don't know how to help you other than save your pennies and and maybe good things will come come your way and and i think his point is well taken it's like well i mean you know why should i spend money on that when i have other things i could possibly be doing but then he's really referring to the, there's a cost to having it you know and it's it's uh and it's a terrible thing uh and so uh, i call it the guy to come ask you a bird and if there's some way you can lift it then that's a really great thing to do and so what would you tell people better than me than you know like say of just modest means and and really when they get a price they just like you know wow that kind of thing um i would say that um you know you you really only live one time right and you know if it's something that is really holding you back it could stop you from you know really going for something right like going for that job interview and being as confident as you could have been and that could be like the the you know those little percentage losses that you get could mean the difference between you getting that job or, or not getting that job. You know, um, gyno, it really is. I, I feel like it's an epidemic cause I see, I see it everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Like I see yeah, it yeah, everywhere, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, Especially yeah. if you have it, like you, you can identify other people, right. other yeah. people yeah. all the time and guaranteed like that person is having the exact same right. thoughts that I'm having. Yeah. The, this. And yeah. it's just like, you know, it needs to get fixed. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he didn't give me a concrete answer. It was a philosophical answer. Um, I, I could be a little bit more concrete in the sense sure. that, you know, again, everyone's situation is different, and I respect that 110%. And what I try to tell people, again, I come from little means, so I get I get the value of money. But life is life, and so you got to kind of deal with it. Mm-hmm. I will see... 
plenty of people out there who spend money on some really outrageous things, you know, and, and so really what I would say, if uh, you have to sort of prioritize the issues and if you think a new iPhone or a new car is worth more than your chest, that's for you to decide. Um, anyway, um, what can we say about his case? And I think that's really uh, kind of a, a good, I mean, I'm lucky I walked into his case because it really illustrates a really important point. And that's what we're going to be sort of sticking on plan today with his uh, discussion during the surgery and everything. So first thing first, his posture is not that good. Um, it's he's sloping. Sit up nice. Sit up nice. Put your shoulders down and back. So look at that. Even if he gets his posture right, you see a, a pretty significant improvement of his chest. So that's uh, kind of a big deal. Do you have a weight loss history? Uh, yes, I was around like 265 and over the last like couple of years, I'm now down to like 227, 226. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, uh, again, you, we've had a lot of discussions on the first fork in the treatment of gynecomastia is whether or not you get skin excision or not. Okay, that's rule number one. So most people, it's really not an issue. However, it is a, a decision that takes a huge amount of judgment because you definitely don't want to relegate someone to the skin excision category who didn't need it, in which case you've got big scars on your chest and all that kind of stuff. And what I've learned among many things in terms of my uh, experience with gynecomastia lots and lots of it, is that there's an inherent capacity for the skin to retract. I just have to see people. I have to sort of get a little bit of a, uh, an intuition and use my judgment, and I can save you from a lot of heartaches uh, and all that kind of stuff. Now, there are a lot of people that would examine him and say, oh, my God, look at this. He's loose here. His uh, nipple is kind of sagging. His, 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 uh, his, his, his pec muscles up over here. We're going to have to relocate his nipple and kind of take the skin out. The answer is absolutely not. Um, now, there's a chance that he may need some skin excision after we're done with the surgery, as I always try to qualify everything. Nothing's 100%, but I would take any bet of any amount of money that we're going to get where we want. So what's the deal? I empty out this stuff. His skin is just going to retract on its own. I can I can feel it. There's some uh, thinning of the dermis. There's some ramifications from his weight loss for sure, but I know this is going to go back. So really what we're going to talk about is how is he gonna get the nice result that we want? It's like a guy I spoke to yesterday, who by the way happens to be a doctor, and he showed me some of his pictures and he had some lumpy bumpy in his chest, he's a mouth out, and he's like, you know, WTF. And I'm like, dude, I mean, are you doing the things that I told you to do? Oh yeah, 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 and I'm like, hmm, you know, I said, come on, man. I said, forensically, I can look at your chest and say something's going on, I mean, this is unusual. Oh, well, you're right, I'm not working it as hard as you say, I'm only working a minute a day. And I'm like, ah, okay. So you got some scar tissue underneath there, you got some hard healing, you gotta get on this. So anyway, it's a great conversation and we love each other. He's my brother, obviously. But the point is, is that, you know, forensically, I could tell you what you're doing and what you're not doing. And so the moral of the story is you have to do as I say. Most of the time, you don't have to work as hard as I may say, but you got to pay attention. And who would not want the best result possible, right? I mean, he sure. wants the best result possible, and I know he's going to get a result. I know this is going to be a game changer. So we're going to we're going to do the routine today, and I'm not going to talk about what we do. That's been published now, by the way. So it's coming out in the in the literature. Any, any day now, and it's sort of my experience with 5,000, or actually it's 680 cases for a, a little period of time, but the moral story is here we are, 5,000 into this, and we've learned any, even more, and we learned the importance of recovery. So today, we're gonna talk about recovery, and I'm happy for you, man. Crazy. And so it's always a big day, you know, it's like, you know, again, why do you do this? Oh, come on, man listen to his history and to be part of this, to get to him to where he's gonna be liberated. He'll be selling more stuff than he knows what to do with. <laughs> his posture is gonna be amazing. And, 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 and more than that, I know he's gonna help other people because this guy, he can talk, he can think. And I want, I want intuitive, smart, sensitive, thoughtful people to communicate on all those forums and those online communities and in person and help out those people that he knows. I mean, there's an old saying, oh, what's it like to, you never know what it's like to be in a person's shoes until you walk a mile, right? Well, having gyno's no fun. He knows that a million, millions of people have a lot of this problem. And what's it like to kind of be on the other side, right? And we'll get into that on a, on a different sort of uh, patient to have those discussions. Do you have any last words? Um, none. I'm, I'm very excited. It's been like 12 years of waiting yeah, for yeah, this yeah, day. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> so we're all excited, and we love uh, we love his positivity. So we're gonna get we'll get going.
Today, I think we're going to focus in on uh, recovery. And I think uh, Micah, your videographer, and I agreed that we're going to get the nurses and the staff involved because they're the ones who actually have to do a lot of the education regarding the uh, recovery. Understand from the get-go that um, the program that I developed here at the AGC is based on doing a few of these and following patients carefully. And I'm going to little talk philosophically or advanced education in terms of you know why I'm recommending what we do and what I you know what, what I think is going to work because I think it's important because if you get it then it's, it's going to make you be a better person at doing what you need to do. So if anything I learned that when you remove this tissue you have to make this skin thin because we know in plastic surgery that thin flaps contract better so you can imagine that all the skin has to go back. His case really isn't that big. It's funny, we'll deal with these huge cases, yeah, <laughs> you know. Sure. But, you know, so what's going on in my mind? Well, I mean, I've done plenty of patients just like him and I know they do really well. Okay. I expect the skin to retract nicely because we're gonna thin it out and I'll show you how we do that. You've seen that in all my videos. My finger literally will sweep right underneath the skin here because we know that thin flaps contract better. And then I'm gonna take advantage of the normal healing process, which is scar tissue, okay, to actually help the skin to retract back and to stick back and all that kind of good stuff. Your role is to assist that during the healing process. Now that is particularly important in the first few weeks, but it continues for months, literally, depending on the circumstances. If you're a really good healer and you know, if not much is going on and everything is perfect, well, then you're just, you're like most people. Some people, uh, like that doc that I was talking about that uh, I was dealing with yesterday, he was getting some hard healing. We just probably had some fluid in there and he probably is a little bit more uh, uh, genetically prone to heal the way he's doing, but he's also not doing what I told him to do. Doctors don't make really good patients, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, it's up to me to phone him up last night and to really just chastise him and say, hey, dude, you know, it's hard for me to, to, to sit there and look at that kind of result when it's really something that you're supposed to be doing. You know, what I tell people time and time again, it's not what I do here that I have concerns about. We got this down. It's what you do when you go home that determines your final result. Even he admitted, well, but it looks really good in a shirt. I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, I can make anyone good look, look good in a shirt. It's how you look without a shirt. It's those details that uh, separate, like, just ordinary cases from, you know, really good results. And so the funny thing, too, is that when I talk about the recovery, it's, it, and, you know, and I go through all these details, uh, you know, I, I, I got to have people understand it's, it's not that interesting, right, Mar? I mean, it, mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is the reason why we're, we're a little weird about it is because, you know, we do... Nope, wrong one. We do upwards of, you know, 450 cases a year, so we're always dealing with somebody, right? And it seems like we're always on the phone dealing with people. Is it wet? And... Um, the fact of the matter is that most people heal uneventfully. I mean, we couldn't have, you know, be on the phone and email them back and forth with 400 patients a year times 20 years. That'd be a lot of people. But it's just some people are different and, you know, for whatever reason, they need more attention. Okay. And the things that we're going to teach you today are just the things you need to do. So think about the healing process. Everything that I'm doing right now is creating trauma. Surgery is sort of controlled trauma. And the end result of any trauma is a healing process. I cut your arm, okay? Uh, some surgeon's gonna suture it up and then it's gotta heal, the stitches gotta come out and there's a process that is well known in medicine to, to sort of well, can you just monitor the, the healing process and, oh, and yeah. the, the natural yeah. healing process. Inflammation and, yeah. uh, you know. Down a little bit. 
collagen formation, and all this go. kind of stuff, scar modulation. It's just a process that happens with everybody. So that's going on underneath your skin here, all right? And so you have to regulate that. You don't see it, so that's why sometimes it's, it doesn't seem as so apparent. So even though, uh, I, and I, I tell you all the same, is that when you're done and you're off the table, it's like, wow, there's your result. Okay, there's nothing in the tissues and it's just looking good. It's what comes up after that that makes it more interesting than it needs to be. So you have to really kind of tend to the garden, as I say. It's just a way of, you got to focus on the garden. You, you weed it, you, you water it, you make sure it gets good sun, um, you know, you fertilize, you do all these things, and all of a sudden you got a really nice garden. It's the same thing like your chest. Um, first and foremost, when you're done, is you're wearing your compression garment, you take it easy. You go home, and for the first days in particular, you really have to keep your hands at your side and, and, and just don't do anything crazy. You're going to feel fine. You may be a little washed out from the anesthesia and stuff, but that only lasts about a day or so. After that, um, you, you know, you're pretty much good to go. We don't want you to get a hematoma, which is a collection of blood. Thankfully, that has been reduced to even lower levels than it has been and I think in in part because of what we're telling people right now you know it's like we've learned I mean you know it happens in people who do stupid stuff like you know and we've heard every story known to mankind you know people that went golfing the next day or lifting up heavy objects or just exerting themselves uh, I mean they just happen hematoma just happen because they happen but uh, you know you have to control the rate of it and so I think that the reason why we do better at it is I spend, we spend more time really telling people what to do and what not to do. And it's not like we're some Gestapo or something. It's just that, you know, you, you, you want to make this as boring as possible. And one of the great things about the surgery to begin with is it, it's reliable. It's consistent in my hands, good results and pretty much ready to go. So we're trying to make it perfect for everybody. So for the first two or three days, you take it easy, you know, even even last, just the first two days in particular, then you can sort of increase your activity. Um, you're wearing the compression garment because it's controlling some of the swelling. It's making the skin go back nicely, keep it even. I can't stress the importance of posture. Posture's got to be good, you know, because when your posture is slouchy, everything is kind of loose. When your posture is up and right the way it's supposed to be. It's nice and tight. So obviously, posture is critical. It's not only critical to help the healing process, but it's also critical um, psychologically. You know, you look better, you feel better. People are looking at you and say, oh man, standing up nice and tall, you know, proud, all that kind of stuff. It starts to resonate. You know, part of the mental healing process here comes with positive feedback that comes from a whole slew of activities that you're gonna do now. And that positive feedback is gonna really set you on the course for that mental recovery that I think is absolutely paramount to a successful guy in the your treatment. It doesn't pay to make a nice chest and then someone doesn't believe in it, you know? So we haven't really studied that process. I think I'm going to focus that, uh, focus on that. And then in the future, now that I have two of the three papers done that I have in the series, I'm going to try to work with some sane psychologists or psychiatrists, and maybe we're going to broach on this subject <laughs> That was an awesome one. Same. Yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. Try to demystify the, the brain and all that mm -hmm. stuff. The good news is that everybody does pretty darn well. Not everybody gets 100% recovery, but most people get pretty darn close, which is a good thing. Um, okay, so we're at the first few days after the procedure. Pain is really not that interesting. Mark, feel free to step in, by the way. Okay. Uh, pain is not that interesting. The bigger the case, the more pain. If I'm spending time laterally here... Uh, up under the arm, you're going to feel it more, you know, if I'm doing a 2000 cc reduction of fat and tissue, you know, all that can canister stuff, you're going to feel it more. And then some people are going to feel it more because some people are going to feel it more. <laughs> Pain is subjective. Pain is subjective, you know, so some people are like, oh, this is nothing. And other people were, um, you know, it's, it's like, oh, geez, it's the worst thing in the world, you know. Uh, but it really isn't that interesting, and I'm also telling you that from someone who had it done on himself, so therefore, don't tell me I didn't have it done. So it's not like, how do you know? Well, I do know. And actually, I think that changed a lot of my teaching because it's always different when you have it yourself, so it makes a big difference. Um, 
we restrict fluids uh, to normal levels, really, um, because it's sort of like the more you drink, it's like being on a boat and, you know, you're spilling water on top of the boat and the boat's sinking and you want to know why it's sinking because you're spilling water on top of it. So the idea is just to restrict fluid is don't be that, that person that is used to walking around with a big 10 gallon jug of water and, and thinking that somehow you're going to drink your way to a better healing state. And if you get online, sometimes you can read that, you know, Oh, water is good for healing. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's always positive attitude, so is being healthy, and so is a lot of other things. It's just uh, not as critical as you think, in particular to the healing in this region here. Um, so, the reason why we're talking about water is one of the problems that you can get after the surgery is seroma. Seroma is a collection of fluid, okay? The body wants to fill in any missing space with fluid. Induration is a form of healing that, uh, or, or just an observation, a clinical observation. It gets, this is softer, this area is a little firmer. Uh, it has that, like that yellowish hue. Um, it's a little tender. That's because the water in the tissue is, uh, is there and it's, it's given it that appearance. So the whole idea is to just kind of control that. We've learned through history that people who, for instance, go on drinking binges after surgery, they get into problems, you know. They get hematomas, they get uh, alcohol in particular. They get uh, much more fluid. And what's funny is they come to the office and it's like, they kind of give you this look, you know, and you're like, dude, I mean, obviously you're drinking. Oh, no, no. I said, come on, man. I mean, they do a lot of this. I'm really good at this forensically. So it, it just means that you... If I ask you a question or imply something, you know, prove me wrong, but, you know, it's pretty obvious. Anyway, so then they always come to to the truth. And, yeah, yeah, I went with my buddies and, we, you know, whatever. I get it. Um, but the problem is now you got some fluid and that kind of uh, puts you behind uh, the eight ball a little bit. It's not the end of the world, but it's something that can interfere with your recovery for sure. And it leads to heart healing and scar tissue and all this kind of stuff. And best, best not to get there. It's not going to kill you. It's not going to, you know, it's, it's, but remember, I'm, I'm trying to think I want the best result possible, the cleanest chest, smoothest, all this kind of stuff. If you start getting fluid, that's a problem. Now, to go through the fluid really quickly, so what do you do? I got some fluid. Well, what is it? It's a pocket usually, something that pops up in the weeks after your procedure. Feels like a waterbed. Uh, it's an area of fullness, that kind of stuff. When you touch it, it looks like a wave. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, you get the, on the big, Yeah, I like catch the wave. You know, I mean, it's like a wave. And so, what do you do about that? Well, I mean, if you're in the middle of nowhere and there's no dock, you just have to deal with it, and it'll go away. But then you're likely going to get some scar tissue in case you're going to look a little bit asymmetrical. Okay. So you want to get that fluid out, and it's as easy as sticking a needle in it and just aspirating the fluid. It's that easy. But the problem is for my in-town patients who can show up here, bing bong, fluid's out, off you go. But if you're an out-of-towner, which most of my patients are, that's a whole other story. Because now you got to find someone who's got to stick a needle in the chest. And unfortunately, these people act like it's some kind of like, oh, I don't even know. Mars roll, rolling her eyes. It's like... They think it's like brain surgery. Yeah, it's like it's brain surgery or something. So I can't help you with that, folks. That's the state of medicine we're in. You have to find someone who can get, get that fluid out, stick a needle in. It's right underneath the skin. Not a big deal, um, but it is what it is. And so uh, if it's your, that person who's out of state and you have fluid and you're all whatever, conniptions and conoitered and trials and tribulations it's not that we don't care dude but you got to get you can figure it out i mean it's just it that out. simple i get mean you, yeah you got to get it out and you got to find the right person and you know i'm sorry it happened to you but it happens all this kind of stuff um it, it is what it is s-o-c-k-s mm -hmm. it's the way i remember the spanish thing it is what it is man you got to deal with it uh and that's why the best way to to kind of deal with it is not get it to begin with and that's why we kind of go through all these discussions but uh, that does resolve. It does go away. And worst case scenario is you get some scar tissue and sometimes I have to give some steroids and we do use steroids during the, the healing process. Not on most people, but on some people. And that makes a big difference. All right. So the big conclusion after the fluid issue is what? 
It's the premise of my paper that uh, was was just accepted. Thank goodness, it's been a long time coming. And it basically reveals the fact that yes, you can remove 100% of the tissue and yes, you can get a nice result. Beautiful result actually. Um, but the most common problem that I discovered was not seromas and hematomas. It was what? Scar Mark? tissue. Scar tissue. Scar tissue. That was the number one reason why I had to go back to surgery to make a result better. Okay? And it's important for you to kind of all grasp this. Scar tissue formation after gynecomastia surgery was the number one reason why this surgeon in his case series had to go back to operate. And it wasn't hematoma and it wasn't seroma. So that's a, a little bit of a sort of an eye-opening thing because basically, you know, previously the literature doesn't really mention scar tissue that much. I don't think at all. And then here along I come along and I'm saying, well, it's scar tissue. And so how did I come along this revelation? I don't know. Maybe you need to do a few thousand of them and then you follow them up and you realize that the reason why I had to go back to surgery and all these phone calls was scar tissue. So therefore, my focus as you can tell today, is, is turned from, oh my goodness, you know, you need to focus more on not what I'm doing to make it appear nice, but how we manage the recovery. And so that's the importance of this whole thing. Um, so if scar tissue does show up, you can, uh, it means that you really didn't get it when you should have gotten it, which means early on. Uh, if it forms and it stays there, it's sort of like this was flat originally, and then all of a sudden you got this lump, you can feel it. Sometimes you can see it. If it's established and been there for months and months and months, it's hard to make that go away, even if you pound on it with the, with the mechanical, you know, boom, boom, boom devices or whatever. Massage guns. Massage guns. You, you know, it becomes uh, something that you got to live with, and it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, and it's also misunderstood as recurrence. It's not recurrence. It's just uh, scar tissue. Recurrence is something that I see from people other than my own patients. I've seen recurrence in one of my patients in about 5,000. So it's 0. 0.00001. So that's why I tell you recurrence is pretty rare. But I'm also the doctor who removes all the tissue. So therefore, you know, maybe that has something to do with the recurrence rate. Um, again, I, I don't have scientific evidence for that, but it just seems that way. The most common cause of recurrence in my experience is uh, docs who leave stuff in there and then the patients, you know, they're, they're, they don't always know everything. Uh, although my patients know everything. Yeah. Study my stuff. Study my stuff. You'll actually know everything. Uh, you'll know more than your doctor in most cases. Almost in all cases, it's amazing. But anyway, um, recurrence is the, the oh well, wait away. The tissue will will is swollen, will go away, and then you wait six months, and then lo and behold, it's still there. So the most common cause of recurrence is residual tissue that's left over or scar tissue that's mistaken for uh, gynecomastia tissue. Um, moving along to sort of, how would you say, oh, mundane, everyday sort of issues with the recovery. And I'm going to let my nurses talk a little bit about this today. All my staff, actually, because they got to deal with it. I mean, we all deal with it. But, you know, get it from their perspective, which may be different than mine. Um, the pain from this procedure is really not that interesting. I mean, in some real big cases, you know, maybe a day or so you feel it bad, but uh, you're on medication for a day, meaning you're taking narcotics. But for the vast majority of us, you just take some Motrin. You don't even really have to take narcotics, so we don't have to add to this whole narcotic uh, epidemic, right? Mm -hmm, I agree. You know, we don't need that stuff. Just take Motrin. It works beautifully. I take it for my creaky bones all the time. Actually, I don't. I only take it when I do reverse. What do they call it? Reverse, reverse squat. Reverse psychology. No, reverse psychology. <laughs> I like that. Reverse psychology. Wait, it makes you feel <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They call it reverse squats. <laughs> and what? Uh, oh, the pain in my butt. No. I, I was like, I'm like, oh my god, are you kidding me, man? I'm like, the next day I couldn't even walk. It was unbelievable. But I feel like I'm gonna get a JLo, so <laughs> I'm gonna work yeah. on that. Um, but uh, anyway, so the pain is really not that interesting, and the recovery really isn't that interesting. When can you go back to work? Oh, a day or two later, you know, you're not taking narcotics, that's Depending good. Depending on your work. Yeah. If you're doing heavy lifting, I'd wait at least a week, but as long as somebody else can help you, 
and yeah. you can go back yeah. to work in a couple days. Yeah. But I think the it, it's like uh, if you guys have been following me, if I'm a big forest and tree guys, I try to look at the forest first and then the trees. The recovery really is not that interesting. Okay. Uh, uh, having said that, you know, it is real and, and I've been through it. So um, it's more of the, the, the people who, who basically have some harder healing and have some of these little issues. They have to spend more time. Like that doc I was telling you about who had his surgery a month ago. I'm like, dude, I mean, you need to, you need to get on this. You need to do it two or three times a day for 20 or 30 minutes, you know? And his answer is like, oh, I'm like, well, you don't have to, but if, if you don't complain to me, yeah. you know, I mean, it's just, that's what you got to do, you know? S-O-C-K-S. It is what it is. You got to get it done. So, uh, I actually tell patients to roll and basically until you feel no hardness left. Right. Yeah. Roll until you feel no hardness left. Rolling is actually pretty cool. So the so the, the the science behind that is is science. It's pressure. Pressure makes a huge difference. And so you're breaking up sort of like the nuggets of the 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 healing process, and you're flattening it out, and the body resorbs it. And then all of a sudden, when you go back there, everything feels good. It's nice and flat. It's soft. It's like okay, man, you're Nirvana. You don't have to rub it anymore. And the other thing too is um, that uh, you know how long do you do that? Well, you start it. Oh, about three weeks after, maybe sooner. Okay, depends how fast you're healing, and then you you continue until, like Mars said, you, <laughs> there's not much there, and it's like, what am I doing? I have a perfect chest. Why am I doing this? Well, guess what? You've reached uh, the stage where you don't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah. All right, so so th yeah, so this is the vaser here. It's getting a little hot. I've been doing this for quite some time. These weight loss patients do have often some of this harder, more resilient mm -hmm. tissue. Um, than everybody else um, and that's just the nature of the beast I'm gonna do some liposuction now to remove some of the melted fat if you will and I'm gonna treat the sides over here what's gonna make this skin back go back it's two things one is the fact that it's like a, it's a bag full of this junk and it's stretching it out and so once I remove that junk it's gonna retract the skin has this natural elasticity the problem is he's lost a lot of it because of his weight change it's that's how he's got this laxity okay the second thing is that scar that we're actually talking about we're trying to get rid of in in this case we're actually trying to use it to our advantage because it's going to be like mortar between bricks or glue that's holding something up you know you want to make sure that as the glue hardens as the healing underneath hardens that whatever you put on this object of glue, you want it to be flat, right? It's sort of like you're hanging a small picture or something with these sticky things. You want to make sure before the glue hardens that everything is aligned, right? And so it's the same thing here. Think of it in the same way that, you know, it's going to heal this, it's going to heal a scar tissue and this scar tissue is actually going to help us to hold it in the right position. Well, once it hardens, you can't really move it. So that's why you want to make sure that if you have any creases or any dimples or anything you got to straighten that out in the early parts of the healing process you know you don't want to have a crease that's been there for let's say four or five six weeks you're like oh, i got this crease well you should work that out a long time ago and one of the things i'm introducing now is even like mar did it yesterday tell tell the world what you did yesterday so we had a patient that had a crease right here uh, because he had laxity skin lax skin from the surgery so we because that's that how his skin quality is. Right here. Um, but so uh, what we do is we teach you on how to skin, skin. skin. It's not just from, pulling like from this. the surgery. It's actually because re that's how his skin, skin, skin quality is. Pull it up all um, the way. But so we'll what we do is we teach you on how to pull up on the skin. It's not just pulling like this. Kind of pull it up. Actually, take it to where it doesn't. It's not adhered. Pull it up anymore. And you'll see. And then you push it. Need to get a video off of that too. That uh, crease that you've read had, kind of pull it up and no longer there. Take it to where it doesn't cut a tear anymore. And then you push it up. Look at that. Steps. You get the girl way, talking and she's just hacking away like a dog. It's no longer there. The moral of the story is that when you see my finger go underneath there, this skin is lifted up like a little layer, just like it is over here, under here. So if you have a crease here, you got to move that skin so that the crease is no longer there. You getting this <laughs> crease? So Lift and separate, baby. <laughs> so you get your finger underneath there. Or, well, it's, that's me, but on top there, and you can actually pull that. Look at that. See, this is actually stuck because it has a little glue, but look. 
pull it and then all of a sudden it lays down and then once it lays down nicely you use this lipoform that we get you you put that on top and then you adjust that until suddenly this all heals down nicely and then it's not moving anymore so you know you're home free take a little lube here yeah. some liposuction i'm doing laterally here again why for two reasons one to contour this up so he has a v-shaped chest masculinize the whole upper chest right that's what it's all about my zone system in the first paper, which was the first of three papers, is becoming closer to reality, which is really super cool. The fundamental issue with this was following. The diagnosis, in terms of what I'm trying to achieve in AGCs, I wanted to simplify the diagnosis and treatment of gynecomastia. So diagnosis was the first paper. It goes by visual, goes by zones. The treatment is the second paper. Um, two years, 600 patients, what we're doing. And then the third paper is going to be a culmination of like 5,000 people and sort of putting it all together, okay, into a sort of a system that works, that's consistent, reliable, and safe, okay? And so I know it sounds simple and easy, but believe me, the problem with the gynecomastic treatment right now is like, you know, oh, I go to different doctors and they all tell me different things. Dude, it just, <laughs> it doesn't need to be that way, you know. No matter how you look at it, again, the forest is this. It's a two-step procedure. You're contouring with the fat, liposuction, and you're removing tissue. Those are the fundamentals of the procedure. How I do that or how someone else does it, as long as they get those results that are reliable and consistent, that's fine by me. And what I'm trying to do is just kind of help the masses in the world to just do it in a way that certainly works for me time and time again. I mean, three or four times a day for 20 years, you know. Um, so it, it works in our hands. But anyway, let us not digress. Let us talk more about the recovery. So this is the famous lipofoam that we will be giving you the day of surgery. Um, we usually cut it in half for you, so you're going to be placed, it's going to be placed in your chest just like this. And you're going to be using this for at least 10 days. Um, the first two days, you're going to be having a ABD pad first and then your lipofoam. After two days, you're not going to need that ABD pad, so we want you to have this lipofoam directly to your skin. It's going to help with the swelling, it's going to help push all the swelling to other areas, so it, the swelling doesn't sit right behind that nipple. So this is great stuff. It's also gonna help with skin retraction. So when we teach you how to pull your skin up, this lipofoam is gonna hold it in place. You'll be using that for 10 days. Oh baby! All right, so what I'm right, what I'm doing right now is trying to get it perfect, which means I'm plucking around and kind of looking at the contour and assessing the situation because I want it to be kind of perfect, knowing the limitations. I'm getting close. Did you ever spend time speculating what they might be up against, or? It's case by case all the Well, say that again? Like, you, could you speculate what he might be up against with his recovery or? Well, I mean, I think that's the context of the whole video. You know, like what, what are we against? Is that uh, he's got uh, pretty miserable skin. skin. Not bad, but the skin determines your result. Uh, okay, turn that off for now. Let's just kind of catch up a little bit here. So, Mar, put a pile of that stuff on your side so we can see. All right, so we're, we're back in the operating room here and uh, Micah was out there interviewing the, some of the staff on recovery things. And, and we're kind of giving you an update here. So this is an example of the the stuff that was removed on this side that was right in this region over here so i did the same thing i got another pile over there it's, it's similar we don't need that you can leave that there um okay but so where are we at well if you, it, it, this whole breast issue is gone i right, look under here i can see his muscle right uh, underneath this little filmsy layer there's a muscle i could see that his skin is a little kind of 
what would you call it? Loosey goosey here, but not bad. Still has some elasticity. See, it still kind of springs back, which is good. You can imagine how a crease can fo uh, form. You see that, something like that. If you let that sort of get stuck like this, you don't move it, then it's gonna get, you're gonna have a crease like that and it, it's the way it is, right? And so appreciate this, that first of all, it's a top-down approach. I removed all the stuff, so that's just dermis. So all that stuff that gives you the expanded reel is gone, right? You have a little bit of a depression here, right in this region here, because that's the epicenter of this area where I moved. I contoured the uh, surrounding zone so that there's really a nice smooth uh, transition and there's just better definition, okay? I'm happy with this skin, but look at this. So let my finger, the finger, see that? All underneath there. So this tissue is made pretty thin, okay? Because thin flaps contract better, right? You can almost think that the reason why he had that little flubby breasty stuff is that it's like it was whatever weight was there was too much for his skin to even handle right and so the moral of the story is that i'm a little bit more aggressive than maybe some other people because the philosophy is a little different that i have to thin this out pretty good in order to get that skin to retract well and to avoid these big scars and give them the best result possible but really what i'm trying to say is look i can shift this skin around you see this this is all skin I can shift this around. See this? I want to nipple up over here. I can stick it over here, um, down here. So it moves, right? And it's an underlying layer. So what you do is you got a crease. You literally, you know, buff it up and kind of beat out some of that tissue that's underneath there. And then all of a sudden, look, you can move it. And then once you get it at the right position, you lock and load. You put your lipofoam, that stuff we give you, keeps it nice and flat, right? And life is good. Um, we treated this zone pretty aggressively too to remove some of the, we see, we still got a little bit more, may want to do a little bit more, a little bit full right here, but you know, what's the end point of treatment? I'm getting pretty close. Now the gap here, I'm going to fill in with my stitch, uh, which, uh, as I say, is not, uh, brain surgery, but it is based on some fundamental anatomy, right? And, uh. I did bring this to bear on the understanding and it's just a simple closure that fills in the space so you don't have an, a, a gap or a depression or a donut or whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, I think it's simply ludicrous to think you're going to get a perfect result. But I can also tell you that you're going to get an amazing result the better you, you, better you work at it. It's just that simple. You can overwork it too. So sometimes people take these instructions too, too, too crazy, like, too and literal. too literal. So, um, what well, they get bruising and, you know, sometimes it causes swelling. It's not common. It's almost like if you're going to do one, it's probably better to be a little bit more aggressive. Uh, aggressive. Okay. But I mean, it's like, you know, you're asking lay people to manage the healing process and they're like, duh, you know, like, what's that? I mean, you can read it and all of a sudden you become an expert, which I love. I love about people who read, well, no, I love their experts. Man, this takes years and years and years of just almost getting intuition. And, uh, and like I say, the reason why I'm pretty confident when I tell you stuff is because I've just been there so many times. And I always do the lawyerly stuff and tell you that, well, I give you no guarantees, right? Because God forbid someone has a creep. Oh, you said, no, I didn't say that. I said... Most people do really well. Everyone's going to do really well, actually. It's how well you do. I can tell you, write this on the table. He looks magnificent. I'm sending him home from here, and let's see how he does. So he can only kind of kind of make it worse than it isn't right now, and that's what he does at home. So this looked beautiful to me. I'm happy. Um, I think that um, he's going to do beautiful because this whole video is about him doing beautiful. So therefore he wants to do beautiful, but the things that you just hopefully picked up that what will make the difference in terms of, you can see he's a little depressed here because I haven't put that stitch on this side, but on this side I did. He stays with his compression garment, um, all that kind of stuff. Got a little tethering here because that's the stitch that I put down here that's pulling, but that'll go away with time. Um, so managing depression is less about the, recovery and more about the stitch that you do managing what the depression 
The depression is is all about the the stitch that I just stitch. did. You can see the depression you over here because I didn't put that stitch what? in there. You see, it's you a little different. Little and so that's hole. the donut stuff. But see, remember, this is here, yeah. There. This is all predicated on removing all the tissue. And so doctors would believe, okay, if you left a bunch of stuff right underneath there in this area, well, then you don't have that depression. Yeah, you don't. But you still have the. Puppy but you nipple. still have the puppy nipple. So what's the point? You still have the chance of recurrence because this is where the stuff starts. So if you don't remove that, what the hell? So the so the really fundamental coolness of what I'm sort of bringing to light is that we're going to fix that. And then you're going to have your cake and eat it too. So we're done with the procedure and it really went well uh, according to the surgeon. In other words, what I tell you, you a lot is that I, I have complete control over here. And there's things I can observe on the table to see if this guy's kind of lucky. Like... Immediate skin retraction is what happens on the table. His was pretty good. It wasn't great, but it was pretty good. Uh, I was able to get a nice contour, which means that I was able to contour all those areas up. I have to thin out that skin so that I maximize the potential for that skin to retract. Okay. I removed all the tissue. That's what I do. Um, top down, especially under the reeler, because that's what creates the puffy nipple. And then use my internal flap slash layered closure to get the final result contoured the whole upper chest so that it looks well done. Okay, what a concept, okay? <laughs> uh, so it sounds really simple, doesn't it, Mike? When I say it that way, it well, but that's it, man. So it took me like 20 years to get to this point to tell you this, um, but that's what the BFD about this whole thing is about, is that we've got a system that's down and that, that kind of works and everything like that. So one of the things that I was thinking about where I was asking Mike, what, what do you want to finish off with this? So the scar tissue stuff. So the scar tissue is real, okay? But it's not like everybody gets it. It's like a big deal. It's just the most important thing that I got to deal with. And I can tell you this, which is an interesting uh, th thing to ponder. Since I had my surgery about two years ago, the incidence of, of revision for scar tissue is a lot less. The hematoma rate and the seroma rate is a lot less. Now, it wasn't high to begin with, by the way. And it was comparable to all of this stuff that was published, which is, I don't even know if I believe it. But... Uh, so the rates were all within sort of the normal range, okay, which is good. But then it kind of went down even less. So little that, you know, it's like I got the surgeon's trepidations. I got to knock on wood because, like, why? We don't even want to talk about it. But I think I know why. I didn't do anything different. What I did is I learned from my own case, and I was a bad patient, had every problem known to mankind. I learned that these issues are real. And I learned at the end of the day that, it was up to me to ensure my good result. So I wanted a good result. So I, you know, I did what I had to do and I did the massage and the steroids and the, and the, the skin shift, the good posture, the lipofoam. I did all those things and it made the difference. It just, it's completely gone. And I got a nice chest for an old dude. Um, it's a lot better than it was. Things to note, it's not perfect, but I'm not going nuts. Okay. So it's not perfect. I could still live with it. And, you know, whatever. I mean, again, it's this whole perfection stuff that gets out of control. Uh, we do a nice job. We can get an unbelievable result, but there's going to be people that have some slight imperfections. Excuse me. Life, you know, uh, sometimes you can fix them. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes they're so small. Who even like, who cares? I had a bodybuilder yesterday and they're a little different because they're meticulous. Came back after two years and he had a little bit of fullness in the area that I didn't even treat. But I'm happy to treat him because it's like we're going to get a nice result and all that kind of stuff. So the moral of the story is I think my sort of, uh, what do I call it? My uh, explanation to you about the focusing on of the recovery helps. Because now when you get it, you're going to do the things. And I think that's what drives down all these things. So I'm in your face and I'm telling you, don't do this, don't do that. And I don't want to be a pain in the ass, guys. I just want you to have a nice result. And I'm not gonna waste your time. I'm from Brooklyn, I don't waste people's time. It's just like, tell me the things I need to know, don't waste my time with the stuff I don't. I mean, you know, this whole idea about, like, if there are scars on the outside, I mean, come on, seriously? There's a little thing here, a little thing underneath there. Let's let's get over the scar, okay? It's really nothing. Um, little things just shouldn't bother you. The big picture is, you know, avoid the hematomas, avoid the seromas, get your skin get right, get your posture right, work the result. And then love it and own it. You know what I'm saying? And then share the love, which basically means you help out those people who you know are suffering. I know he's going to do it. This guy's a super nice guy. I wish we could have filmed his face because I just love people like that. They're sweet, nice, 
want to help, realistic. I mean, that's that's the patients that I love, and those are the people that do really, really good. Damn, that that's is out of you. crazy. And then just the lipo alone, with the amount of fat that came out. Ooh. <laughs> Holy you feel a crap. little lighter? <laughs> Holy yeah, crap. it looks great. The results are going to be awesome. Wow. Do you have your camera with you? Would you like to see a picture? Um, my phone should be somewhere, but okay. oh. I mean, this is going to be video, yeah. so yeah. we all have this. Video. Yeah. Wow. It's a lot of mess. That is wild. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's almost like alien in a way. Mm hmm. Wow. All right. Is that what you were feeling underneath? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. It's yeah, you can feel these feel like the same. Yeah. little like glandular. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. All right. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> Drop that off. Awesome. But this is the lipofoam here. As long as you're wearing the vest, we want you to wear the lipofoam, okay? That's sure. going to help that tissue tighten up mm. and really help with shaping the skin. And then these are just until the drainage shops, these little ABD pads, no tape or anything. But there you go. A lot of fluid still in there that's going to be mm -hmm. seeping out, but you can tell it's a huge difference. Wow, no cone. <laughs> it looks great. Wow. Yeah, it's going to be very important to use this lipofoam. It's going to help tighten that skin up like mm. that. Okay. Wow. Looks I really good, pumped. though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So today's an exciting day. It's always fun to see you guys back. Um, I rarely get to do so because most of you are traveling um, from out of state. So it's usually either FaceTime or photos or whatnot, but it's fun to see you guys in person, um, especially because I was able to see him walk in with a shirt on that was really tight. And I say really tight. It wasn't inappropriate, okay? <laughs> but it was like kind of, it was like, tight against his chest. And that lets me know right away that he's feeling good about himself. And that's the goal of this whole thing, right? Is that you feel good about yourself. And um, he said, you know, that he was, you felt it like it was a therapeutic thing, right? It was a very therapeutic experience for yeah. me, for sure. You know, it's, it's tough when you go, I mean, it, I got it in puberty, right? So yeah. like 12, 13 range, you yeah. know, 27. So like, what, what is that? 15 yeah. years of like just constantly thinking about this one thing. Mm -hmm. And then to like, I remember like the first moment, like taking it off at, at my house and it's it was gone. just a wild experience. Right. Sure. Right. A wild yeah. Experience. And I'm going to share this too, but he's also told me something else that I thought was really awesome. Uh, is that in like the last like four days, right. You, he hadn't thought about his chest and I think yeah. that's so liberating. This surgery is very liberating for people. For sure. um, mm -hmm. Also something to note, you know, here we are looking at his chest and he has a long ways to go. He's still got swelling and induration, which we talk about all the time here. It's just hard swelling in the tissues. It has to be massaged or rolled out. Um, but he's come so far and I just want to, you know, pop this back up there. I mean, this is pretty significant, right? This is what he was living with. And, um, and then I want to flip... Well, actually, that's a pretty cool image, too, right? That's what we took out of there. And that's a pretty big deal. You know, it is going to take time to heal. Um, this isn't just, you know, it is instant gratification in a lot of ways, but you also have to allow your body to do what it needs to do. Um, and then here. Okay, so look at all this stuff lateral here, okay? Um, that is a big, big deal for guys. And just like he and I were just talking, um, he felt like he was going to have to have that excised. Can you see it good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I see why, you know, because he had some hanging tissue, right? Um, but thankfully, we didn't have to do that for him. Um, and he even said that if we had told him we were going to have to excise it, meaning an incision all the way from over here across to the middle of the chest, 
he would have done it because it bothered him that bad. Um, so to be able to do this with so few scars or such a minimal scar, should I say, um, is just huge. It really is. Um, so, okay. So we can pan over to his chest right now. So what am I looking at right away? So obviously I can see in duration. Okay. He's still wearing his garment, even though it's a month out. And I always tell people like, check out your body. If you feel like you need to still wear the garment because you notice swelling, then still wear the garment. You know, we kind of give you a generalized instruction. You don't have to, you know, follow that to a T. You want it, if you need to extend it, extend it. Okay. So, um, he was asking me about these lines through here and, um, that's just the skin trying to go back. Okay. That was, that was expanded a lot. And now we've taken out that gland and we're, it's trying to retract back. And so you get this kind of stuff, this kind of like, uh, lines and creases and stuff, but that is why we hound you guys so much on the rolling and the massage. I mean, I feel like I say it a thousand times a day, but it's so critical because if he does what we ask him to and he massages and he rolls and he does all that good stuff, this is going to lay flat. I've seen it. I know it. It's hard to believe. And it's not just after a week, but it will. It's going to take a few months. All right. So he's going to do things like what I'm doing. Like you take your thumb and you push it down in there and just, you know, massage out that crease in there and you do it all over and you get a massage gun and you massage the whole dang thing. Okay. And you just do it every day and you're diligent about it and you just get after it. Um, and this will be just flat and smooth and awesome, you know, and, and you won't even be able to tell he had the surgery in a year. Um, I did ask since he lives close by if he will come back and see us in three months. And he said, yes. So I'm going to hold you to it. Yeah. It's <laughs> on video. He said he would do it guys. <laughs> and so hopefully, um, we're going to hold off on publishing this video and then hopefully, uh, we'll get to see him in three months. If you don't see a three month photo after this, Okay. You know, he lied to me. <laughs> he did not show. And so I don't have anything to show you guys. Yeah. Um, I do want to say. Too, yes. Like, say anything. Like I remember like maybe the second week after post-op, like, like daily. Yeah. It changing, you know, like me yeah. seeing it in the morning real quick mm -hmm. versus like after the shower, it looks like a completely different chest. I don't it's, know if that, if you're exactly right. You're exactly right. Yeah, that, that but... that's, and they haven't said it. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you mentioned it on the camera um, because it fluctuates, you know, um, swelling fluctuates daily, you know, I, and for like full body liposuctions, I always uh, remind people, you're going to ride a roller coaster of swelling. And all that means is that one day you're going to wake up and you're going to be like, dang, I'm like skinny. I'm all this has yep. come together really great. I look great, you know? And then say you go out for sushi and martinis or something, then, you know, the next day you're like, oh my gosh, I feel so bloated. So just, just know that that's just a healing process. It's up and down. It's not just one steady line. Okay. You just kind of go up and down. It levels off. Okay. But it takes a long time, you know? And so just being patient with the process, I would say, if I had anything to say to you guys, like advice wise, be patient with the process. You know, um, we do a ton of this stuff. We know how it's going to turn out. You just have to trust us, you know, and you have to do what we ask. We cannot sit there and remind you every day to massage and roll. That's on you. Okay. So th that's your homework. All right. You got to do it if you want the best results. Um, and yeah, anything else I should note? Tell no, people. I think, um, I think that's pretty much it. I'm very, very happy with my results. Like, yeah. even if I end up having like some lines or whatever, like it's still so much better. Oh my goodness. Like thousand percent improvement. Good. Like if, if even there's like a slight, like off look to it, yeah. like, I am just so pumped that I can just wear normal shirts Absolutely. and like be I love a normal that. person. Yeah. <laughs> positive <laughs> attitude. Yeah. I for recommend sure. that for everyone as well. Positive you attitude. Increase your sales at work. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah. And it will help your productivity at your job. No, I'm kidding. That's the new thing. Right. Um, but okay. So like I said, we're going to try and follow up with him in three months. I'll probably get some photos today just in case he forgets about us. Um, as always, we appreciate you for allowing us to, to capture this and share it with everyone. Um, and then follow us on Instagram. We switched the Instagram to Austin Gynecomastia Center. 
So please go follow us there. And um, yeah, we look forward to seeing you. Well, you look like a totally different person. Yeah, yeah. I know. I've been looking at the pictures like over the past couple of weeks. And I'm like, damn, this is like crazy. It yeah, is. It's, it's really cool. All the experience. Yes. It's good. It looks great. I mean, even if this is like the final result, like I'm pumped yeah. you know, about it, but like for sure, like, you know, if we can. Yeah, get that little that bit first, of yeah. scarring to go away. Look at that. Yeah, that's insane, huh? <laughs> that is, that's wild. It's crazy. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah, I've been working hard though. Yeah, 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 yeah. I you're mean, building that up yeah, yeah. That, you're doing some work there. Okay, <laughs> that's not all Dr. C. Just like full disclosure. Yeah, work has been done. Okay, the stairway that we use here is Kenalog. Can you see it? Sometimes we use 10, sometimes we use 40. Okay. Um, depending on how much scar tissue he has, that's how we decide like what we should put in there. Yes, right there. That's the way I look the best, I'm sure. I'm sure of it. Okay. All right, so we're drawing up the kinolog here. I'm gonna use a whole CC on him. And the way kinolog works is that it reduces inflammation. So the scar that's trying to form in there, this medication will help to reduce it. Um, it takes a few weeks. You'll need to massage it after you have this treatment done. So today when he goes home, he'll massage and massage and it helps it to just flatten out and get smooth and go away. Okay, so we are about four months post-op from gynecomastia treatment for him. He has done a wonderful job. I hope you can capture all of it, Micah, because he's, he's gotten in great shape. <laughs> it's been really fun to see him progress and do so well. Um, so we're gonna just treat the scar tissue that won't go away for him uh, with just massage. He, it's pretty soft compared to other people's, mm -hmm. um, but I know with just this little treatment, it will help. So he's got a little it's lump really, like, of it. Stubborn, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, it'll it'll I've help. I've tried, I've tried like massaging like crazy. Can you even feel that? No. Which is pretty cool. Getting pretty deep into it. And right here, this is probably the part that bothers him the most. All smiles, he's all fit, he's changed his life, right? Yeah, definitely, um, I think I mentioned this in the last video, but like very like therapeutic experience yeah. for me. Really for good. sure. Yeah. Good. You're it's a uh, very different, of it. It very looks, different life. You just look sure. great overall. Yeah, thank you. So congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for letting us do the video. For sure. Yeah. And um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, like I say, we'll see him back maybe one more time for the steroid. But other than that, he's he's golden. And uh, what else? What else do I need to add? Oh, at this point, Micah is going to show you slowly the before and after, so you can see how great he looks. Yeah. Doing good. Yeah. Doing good. Yeah. It's been a crazy like nine months since the surgery and everything so yeah. um definitely exciting, exciting. how so crazy like let's just change. in life like yeah life is generally a little bit different yeah. you know um i think i mentioned on the other like couple of interviews or whatever that like this issue is something that like is always like in the back of your mind Absolutely. you know even yeah. if i don't know certain percentage is like you're always like sort of thinking about it you know um so it's cool to have like all that time back yeah right? and not have to mentally I don't know, just worry about it, yeah. or like think just about, be about it, just be like, big weight lifted me. off yeah. your shoulders. Exactly. I love it, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yeah. That's good to hear, yay. Yeah. And you got killer results. Yeah. I'm excited.